Hello everybody and thank you for joining me for today's webinar where we're going to be looking at blended learning with science. Uh, for those of you who have been to previous webinars, welcome back. For those of you who are new to our webinars, thank you for joining me. My name is Hayley and I'm going to be taking you through um, this today. Um, now, in our previous blended learning webinars in um, maths and English, um, we looked at different areas of education city that can be used to support those. And today is no different. Um, today, we're going to be using the search content function in order to um, find the tools that we're looking at. I'll point out those um, as we get there. Um, but we will be looking at ThinkIt. Those of you who have been to previous webinars, you know I love a ThinkIt. Do love a ThinkIt. Um, and then other supporting tools that we've got available um, to support the, the blended learning and hopefully support sort of indoor and outdoor learning as well as online. Um, so just before we get started, um, if you've got any questions, please save them for me because at the very end, I will give you my email address and you can send them straight over. And also the account I'm going to be using to show um, the tools today is a made up school so don't worry about any names that you might see they're completely made up no gdpr being broken and finally it is an english account so i will point out any differences if you're joining us today from outside of england are we ready let's get started then head over to education city and here we are now if you're on the old home page when you log in don't worry, you can click on the ribbon just there and it will bring you to this new home page. I just think this new page is much easier to navigate. Um, I've kind of become a little bit more familiar with it now as well. So the tool I'm going to be using to search today is the search content function. Um, this is a favourite of mine um, when I was teaching because it will search via a keyword. So, for example, you could type in investigation. and it will list everything that has that keyword as a part of it. And then you can use the left-hand filters to filter through. So we could start with tablet-friendly resources, and obviously I want some science there. Now this area may look slightly different to you if you're outside of England. It may have numeracy and literacy, and obviously this may be in P levels or in early first and second year. But I'm going to be heading into lower key stage two, so years three and four, um, which is uh, P4, P5 age range. And then at the very bottom, we've got our different content types that you can filter through as well. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm after a think it today. And here we are. So loads of really good investigations um, that can be used. The reason why I love an investigation is that it really allows children to take control of their own learning. Um, they can be independent. Plus, it's great for um, the time being whilst children are home learning, maybe. They can be outdoors in this lovely weather, doing that um, learning and then feeding back to you. So we can have a look through and as we're scrolling through you'll notice that there's the title just here you've got a bit of a summary just there and the info button will tell you how this links back to curriculum information or curriculum objectives and obviously that will differ depending upon where you are using education city and which curriculum you follow but you can scroll through and you can have a look at things um, that you might be after now plants is a subject area that I absolutely love doing. Um, and you'll see some of these think it's are brilliant in terms of understanding how plants work and how plants grow. Um, so this one, for instance, you've got um, if you were carrying out the investigation, how would you record your observations? And you've got a couple of ideas that Manu's giving you there. Um, and then you've got that next step, so that greater depth question, if you like. So what chart would you use to compare the growth of different plants? And it's giving you that insight, also really good for cross-curricular maths there as well. So if I head back, head back down to, where was it? Right at the bottom, wasn't it? There it is, just there. 
And obviously this lovely orange plus just there, if I hover over it, it will tell you as well, you can add to a My City. So you can click on the plus and obviously you've got your classwork there and your homework. And you can see I've already created a plants folder, but you could quite easily type into the new homework just there, click on to create um, and create that folder just there. So I'm going to pop it in here and save. Make sure that that um, little orange plus turns into a green tick and it will save for you. And you don't just have to put one thinker in. There's another one that I quite like. Maybe let's look at some plant growth. Again, we can open that up. We can have a little bit of a look at it, see if it is what we're looking for. And we've got some answer there and we've got some nice up next step questions just there as well. Um, but as you become more familiar with Education City, you become to know what exactly it is that you are looking for. So I'm going to have a look. There's one that I'm after that's really good about um, investigating plants growth. And here it is just here. And if I open this one up, this is slightly different than Kit because it talks about variable and fair testing. So it's more about key vocabulary. And you can see here it's discussing which variable you might change if you're planting these seeds. So again, another really useful thing kit. We'll find that one again and we'll pop that one into the folder. I can remember where it is. <laughs> there was it. There it is just there. Click on that orange plus and you'll see the folder's already there and we can just pop it straight in. And can you see that grayed out tick just there? That means I've already put it into this folder. So that's quite a useful tool just to remind you that actually it's already in there. You're not going to worry about popping it in again. So those are um, the thing kits, which I believe are really good for blended learning. And obviously support to support those, learn screens are always really beneficial. The reason why I love a learn screen is that they're great for independent learning again, because they guide a child through that area of learning. So nice for like focus groups or intervention groups, for example. And you can see now you've got all of these tools. We can scroll down, we can have a look here. Absolutely loads of different learn screens there that you can have a look at. Water transportation, for example. Now I could look here, but what I'm actually going to do, if I open up this left hand side, I'm going to head into that My City. And head into the homework option. There it is. And we can find that folder just there, that plants my city. There's a couple of bits that I've already popped in there in terms of learn screens and um, activities. And you may find learn screens or activities in different age groups. There's nothing to stop you from using those different age groups um, for the different activities just there. And you can move things around a little bit. You can delete things if you need to. We can delete that one as well if you want to. And we can also add things in by clicking on the add content function just there as well. Now, just here, because we know we're looking at plants, we can type in the word plant just there. And what I would like to show you is a topic tool. Now, Flash is retiring um, over the summer. And come the new and next academic year, um, you will have brand new resources to use. But for now, there's nothing to stop you from using these tools. One of my absolute favourites in here is the Grow a Plant. Now, if I open that one up and just show you why I love it so much, and you can see here, you can change the variables, click Grow, and you can see how high that plant grows. So that one goes all the way up to the top. That's quite a handy one. But if we go back to the original and click grow, you can see it doesn't grow that far at all. So this one's really a nice one, sort of growing that plant in sort of quick time. But the reason why I also really like this is that when you set this sort of on the lowest possible one like that, you can actually print. Now, you may be wondering, why would I print it? Because instead of printing, you can click into your Dowards arrow and save as a PDF. Now, this might be the sort of thing that you could email home and you could say to children, 
I set my water, heat and light on the lowest level and my plant has grown to 25 centimetres. Why do you think that is? Tell me, explain to me your reasoning behind that. And the next step would be, why not colour in the water, heat and light that you think will make the plant grow to the highest and mark where you think it will be? So it's a really useful tool for that sort of prediction. Um, and then obviously they can um, maybe grow a plant even to see if they are right. So quite a useful tool that. So in addition to that, we can add that into the folder. There we go, just there. And you can see there it is just there. And then you will follow through in terms of your students' preferences and tracking. And you can just work your way through those. And you can see I've put a little note in there as well, try investigating plants. So in addition to that, if I head back to the home page, you will see right at the bottom, we have our quick links to phonics times tables, online safety and play live. We also have our printable resources and our teacher resource pack. Now, teacher resource pack, really useful. It's full of all of those things that you probably spend a lot of PPA time making. I know I did. Um, and you can see lots of tools in there, lots of tools for English, maths, also for science as well. And if I scroll right down, um, obviously you can have a look at this in your own time. If I scroll right down towards the bottom, you will see that we have um, graphs there, graphs and grids that can be used to maybe um, write their results from their investigations. And we've also got there we go, some more graphs and grids there. We've also got some great sort of templates for science investigations. If I scroll right down. Here we go. I know it's here somewhere. There it is just here. So you've got your science investigation template. So again, these are the tools that you might want to save as PDFs and email home with the children. And then it's something that maybe they could store, maybe like a ring binder or something, and then bring it back to school in sort of a project work when they're back again. So that is pretty much everything for today. I do hope you found it useful. And all of our webinars, um, including this one, can be found on our YouTube page. So head over to YouTube and type in Education City um, and you'll be able to find those, including the maths and science blended learning webinars. Do let us know if there's a webinar that you want to see. Some of our upcoming webinars have been created off of your feedback. We do love to hear from you. So we've got our email address just there and all those questions that you might have had um, throughout this webinar, send them over to me and I'll be sure to respond to you as quickly as I can. Until next time, stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.